All right, hey guys. Uh, I know it's been a while since I've done a video. Um, today I wanted to talk about a quick discussion or have a quick discussion uh, about file accessibility and accessing properties and values inside of other modules and classes and how to go about setting them. Um, so let's open up Xcode. I will just create a new project for this example. Single view. And we'll just call this uh, file modifiers, Swift. You can put it anywhere you want. But I just want to kind of just walk you guys through the basic concepts of, of how this works. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and go over here, command in, create a new Swift file. I'll just uh, call this um, animal. I'm going to make a, a simple class here uh, or structure that is an animal. And I wanted to discuss a little bit um, about when you guys see things like private, things like public, oops, public. You see things like um, internal, you see things like file private. You know, what do these all mean? Um, well, they're actually a really cool way um, of segregating out your code base um, and in a sense making it as dumb as possible making it uh, only know what it needs to know um, so when you create classes and you create structures and you create these objects you know this the simple way is to you know just let's here we go let's just write a class and we'll call this uh, person boom here's our class okay and here's our animal structure right and right now by default, they are internal, like this. Um, and, and what that means is, is that basically, if I go into this view controller over here, I go into any other file inside of this project, right? I can actually create an instance of this. Let my animal equal animal, right? I can do that. Um, and I have access to any of the properties that are defined, right? in this class, right, or this structure, pardon me, right right here. So like, let's say I had a function that was like, get uh, name, for example, just really simple, right? And uh, it, let's just say it returns a string, and we'll just say return uh, some animal name like this, okay? Well, because it's internal, it can be accessed outside of it. Now we're outside of this file, for example, right? We're, we're not in this file. Um, I'm in a completely different class, which is a view controller class, and I can access this, if I have this object, which I do here, this my animal. let's go to my view to load. I can call in here now because it's internal. I can call that function that's on it, uh, and I might need to build it. But if I say animal dot, get animal name, you notice how I can call that function. Um, sorry, my animal, get animal name like that. I can call that. This is completely legal because this is seen as being internal, OK? Now, let me go back over here. Internal basically means anything inside of a module, uh, inside of a module will see the properties and functions. So for example, this is internal by default. I don't need to write internal here, but I can, and it won't make a difference. Um, probably it will actually complain uh, if I do that. Uh, but for example, if I have a name here, say I had it was a string and the name is Teddy, let's say for example, Again, because this is internal, it's accessible in the outside world. It's accessible in these classes or any classes that I have in my app. How do I make it so it's not accessible? Well, there's a few different ways. Um, there's private and there's file private. File private I'll cover first. Let's just, I'll declare this entire class file private like this. Okay. What does that do? Well, that's going to throw a compiler error right away because what it does is it restricts the instances I create 
say I come out here and I say let animal another animal equal ah <laughs> sorry I'm not at a uh, desk right now I'm typing on the keyboard equal animal it restricts essentially um, the usage to only be inside of this file. So for example, I could go into this class here and I could say var, we could have an instance of var, which is um, uh, my pet, okay? And it would be of type, right, animal, okay? And I could create an animal just like this, okay? And this is completely legal because this is file private. It is accessible inside of anything in this file right here. Uh, now it's complaining because... Hmm. Oh, it's complaining because this type is now not file private. And the reason it's doing that is because this type, remember, is internal by default, but I need to make it file private as well because I have a file private property on this type. Now it's saying basically that, um, what is it doing here? Why is it tripping? What? No. Okay. Not sure why it was having an error. Uh, we have one error up here because, remember, this animal class is being declared outside of that file. So you'll see that error. I'm going to remove that. The reason, though, going back over here, that I had to make this class, this person class file private, is because it has a property that Swift knows that is file private. So if I leave this as just a regular class, remember, it's internal. So if I go over into this other view controller and I create an instance of it, it would access, it would be technically breaking that accessibility, right? That's why it will give us an error and ask us to make it file private. So, okay, that's one way. File private restricts access to anything, right, outside of the context of this file. I could have, you know, 15 classes in here. I could have another class, right? And this is, say, let's say this is a car. And I could have another class, right? Let's say this is a, I call it a game. I'm just making these at random. I could have another class. Let's say this is a movie, right? They all have their own individual properties, but because, for example, I'm using the file private declarative, I'm saying that this class is restricted to only being used in the context of this file. Example, if I have a, a UI table view cell, maybe I want to have <coughs> the reuse identifier be file private, right, for my table view controller. That is a very good use of the file private. Um, and there are others, um, but it kind of just works with the way that you're flowing and you want your app to flow in the restriction you want. Now let's go about, uh, over private. Private is the probably my most used one. I pretty much will make anything private unless I need to use it outside of the context. Um, for example, if I am working with these properties now, because this class is public or internal, pardon me, by default, right? That means that each of these values inside of this class, okay, like this, my pet, let's say I had a function in here, which was um, uh, feed, let's say, feed pet, okay, and um, we'll put in a pet that we need to feed, right, and we'll say it's an animal, and we won't return anything, but here's our function. Okay, very simple. So essentially, what I can now do is this is an internal class. I can make individual properties and functions private themselves or file private. But remember, if you make them file private, it's going to restrict the same as if this class is being used outside of it. So for example, if I use this, this my pet, right, and I want to make this private, I can use this declarative keyword here to make it private. Okay. That doesn't restrict the scope of this class because what I can do is go into my view controller. I can still create an instance of uh, that me equal person, right? I can still create this instance, okay? The only thing I can't do is now I can't access my, uh, my pet. Uh, I need to build me dot example. See how I don't have access to that 
my pet. The reason being is because that property that's on this class is private, right? So it's not seen outside of that scope. Now, let's go into the next one, public. Well, if internal means it's only internal to this project, what the hell does that mean? Well, public means it would be accessible outside of the defining scope of the module. That can be confusing. Well, if you are using CocoaPods, if you are using um, uh, Carthage, if you are using um, any type of time where you have multiple Xcode projects in a single project, um, or you are working with frameworks or libraries and you want things to be accessible outside of your framework or library and inside of a module like an app, an app is a module, right? Then you would mark them public. Okay. Now let's go a little bit deeper. Let's think about this for a second. Each of these properties, um, and I'm going to go into this structure so it'll be easier. Let's say I have... Um, a property on this animal which is an age and it's an integer right okay now by default and this is going to complain up here because I don't have uh, the initializer some animal and number 12 okay it's age 12 what does Swift do for us in this instance well Swift in this instance default created the getter and the setter, right? We, we can come in here and manually define a getter, right? And setter if we wanted to and basically say, okay, let's, you know, when we try to get this property, let's actually return something else. Uh, let's return 11. Or we can say, okay, well, if this property is updated, okay, self.age equals what some new value that is set to the actual instance, right? So we know that we can define our, our getters and setters, right? But what can we do else that would restrict it? Well, because this is technically an internal property, we can do something like this. We can say, I want a public variable, which is an age. Uh, I'm sorry, public. But I want the setter, which is the way that I set the value, to be private. So I can say public, private, set, variable, and then what is my variable name? It's an age, which is an integer. Boom, just like that. So what effectively does that do? Well, that restricts post-initialization that this value cannot be set outside of the scope of this class, this structure, pardon me. So I could have a function in here, which is uh, update age, right? And we could do age to update two, which is an integer. And in this, I could say, okay, well now I can access self dot age equal age to update two, right? This is completely legal. This is completely fine, right? Because why? Well, because, um, and we need to mark our function mutating, that's fine because we're acting on a value of self. Anytime you act on a value of self before self is defined in a function scope, we need to use the mutating keyword. But essentially here, all you're saying is that because this is a private setter, it's a public variable. I can publicly get the value of this variable, right, of age. I can only set it inside of this structure. If I create an instance of this animal inside of this, for example, up here, and I have a function that tries to act, update my pet's age, you'll see we'll get an error. Okay. So if I now say, okay, well, self dot my pet dot age is equal to three what's going to happen? An error, right? Because, and this error will say, cannot assign a property to a setter that is inaccessible because I declared it private. Now, if you think that you can get cute and you could do something like this, you cannot, I will show you, you cannot have a private, but a public <laughs> setter <laughs> on a variable. We'll just say this is weight, and we'll make 
this a double, right? You cannot do that because you cannot say, I want this to be privately restricted to this 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 instance, this instance, right? And modified only by this instance, but I want someone else in the outside world to be able to change it. Not gonna happen. So that's a little uh, information about how to use getters and setters. That's kind of a quick overview, but I hope that it kind of helps you understand this, uh, this structure here, I'm sorry, of uh, these um, accessibility and file accessibility modifiers because they're very, very powerful. Um, now, if you think about it, one of the things I primarily do, like I said in the beginning of this video, I make everything private unless it needs to be public. So when I'm creating any type of class, any type of structure, um, any type of uh, feature in an app, I want everything to be as private as possible because I don't want some other developer to come in and be able to have access to, for example, um, to things I don't need him to be able to access unless he modifies directly. So for example, in this pet or this person rather, um, you remember I cannot access some of the values that I would in this instance restrict like my pet or something else. So again, making everything private, it's just an easy convenient way to almost sandbox in your uh, development. Um, but again, it ensures with Swift's uh, type safety and with Swift's file safety and class safety that you are not modifying an instance that should not be modified um, and whatnot. So yeah, so again, I hope that helps. If you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Uh, and if you need copies of this code, please let me know. Thanks so much.